Please choose your skill level. Welcome to the Age of the Great Guilds. Son of Signa, it is the dawn of your seventeenth year. The elders await you in the sanctuary. I've never known them to weave such a bright messenger nymph. I wonder why the elders want to see me. I'd better get down to the village. It's dawn. The last leaf of I like the view from the cliff better. There's the long tapestry. I don't remember it looking so old. The threads describe the creation of the world and the passing of the two shadows. Here's more of the tapestry. The pattern shows the entire history of the weavers, back to the founding of the great guilds. The last section tells about the decline of the guilds. There's a third shadow gathering. That's strange. The end is completely torn off. There's Hetchel. And the elders don't look at all pleased with her. You have heard the findings of this council, Dame Hetchel? Have you anything to say in your own defense? My elders, my actions speak for themselves. This reckless defiance is intolerable. Any secret you share with Signa's son might be turned against us. His talent is awakening, and the power is very strong in him. 
We dare not desert him now. A stubborn old fool. Who are you to decide such things? Enough, Lachesis. Petrel, I am grieved to see your many years of service end in such disgrace. My destiny is yours to weave. Petrel, the fabric of your life has been woven by your own choices. Gaze once more upon the great loom, if you would know your ultimate destiny. For that destiny is now upon you. A swan's egg. What does it mean? Something is deeply wrong. That draft has never failed before. What is that noise? Outside! The guild is under attack! Who dares to desecrate the great loom of the weavers? This is the work of that demon boy! We should kill him while we still can! Your name will be cursed forever! Son of Signa! Loom child! Bobbin! My name? But I had nothing to do with this! Wait! Where are you going? No explanations, no goodbyes, and once again I'm left behind. Those are the same four threads spun by the elders. They're still echoing in the loom. egg it's trying to open. It's heavier than it looks. There's my boy. What's happening? The whole village has flown away without us. From the moment you came into this world, Bobbin, great and terrible things have been happening. The elders hoped that your birth was the cause of it. Why would the elders want to get rid of me? I'm such an awful weaver that they never even let me study with the others. They fear you, Bobbin. When the swan arrived, they were already trying to weave the same draft on you that they had worked on me. But the draft turned against them. It means only one thing, that the pattern is failing of its own accord. No! Can't it be stopped? Stop chaos? The only thing to do is embrace it and turn ourselves into creatures of shadow. Or plan our escape. Escape? To where? I don't know. But if we are to survive, we must find out where that flock has flown and join them if we can. You've already found Atropos's distaff. Good. You won't be able to weave very much with it at first, but as you practice, its true power will be revealed to you. It's time to leave this island, Loom Child. Your destiny lies beyond the sunset, across the sea. Mother Hetchel, where are you going? Goodbye, Bobbin. I must follow the swans. Well, this is a fine mess. Everybody's gone and I still don't understand what's going on. Why did they keep calling me Loom Child? Nobody's ever let me anywhere near a loom.
don't these people ever clean up after themselves? Grass green. I hate that colour. That's the book of patterns. I already know what's in it. This wool hasn't been dyed yet. Grass green. I hate that colour. Still dripping, what a mess. Looks much better in white. There's an owl in there. Another owl. I know there were so many owls in these woods. That one is empty. I can't read it. 
The owl's tail feathers are covering the words. He's fast asleep. Ouch! Destiny shall draw the lightning down from heaven. Roll its thunder far across the sea to where I wait upon the shore of wonder on the day the sky is opened and the tree is split asunder. The day the sky is opened. All the holes are full now. I guess that isn't a draft. Wonderful. I can't see a thing. Don't these people ever clean up after themselves?
I like the view from the cliff better. It's dawn. Is it over? I think that's close enough. Well, that only twisted it tighter.
goes. Well, well, well. Looks like a scrawny runt trying to sneak into our flocks. Sneak? You call that sneaking? I heard them coming all the way in from town. Thought you were going to fleece some shepherds, did you? Maybe we ought to take the shears to you instead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I mean, I'm not looking for sheep or, or trouble. I'm looking for a flock of swans. Swans? Swans. You know, birds. Oh, swans, of course. We should have known. Everybody comes here when they want swans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> next, next you'll be telling us you're some sort of wizard off to fly away with them birds. <laughs> right. <laughs> A wizard? Wizard? You wouldn't happen to be the great wizard that Fleece was telling us about, would you now? Fleece? He is sort of dressed like a wizard. I don't know. He doesn't look very powerful to me. Me neither. I say we don't let him by until we know for sure. Come on then, wizard. Let's see some magic. Uh... Or else... <laughs> ah! I sure wish I knew a draft that would work on shepherds. Well, that draft didn't seem to do much good. Well, that draft didn't seem to do much good. I guess that isn't a draft. Hmm. I guess that isn't a draft. Come on, lads. He's had enough. Let him go. Some kind of wizard, eh? Don't trip on your robe, little wizard. Get on, you lazy bunch of yous. Back to work.
not so fast here. Who's that? I can barely hear what they're saying. I trust your excellency is pleased with our progress? That all depends on how far this sphere can help me see. Four hours, most assuredly. Uh, perhaps six with a bit of luck. Only six hours? But I expressly requested eight. Every sphere is unique, Bishop. It is impossible to accurately predict how well this sphere will perform. I need at least eight hours. Eight hours, Master Crucible. See to it. Welcome to Crystal Guard, stranger. I'm Master Goodmode, 31st in the Noble Guild of Glassmakers. And who might you be? My name is Bobbin. Bobbin Threadbear of the, um, Noble Guild of Weavers. A weaver! Tell me, is it true that to peer beneath a weevil's hood brings instant agonizing death? I honestly don't know. Nobody's ever tried it with me. You have such a wonderful view of the sky here. Have you noticed a flock of swans flying this way? Swans? Swans. You know, birds. Yes, yes, swans! <laughs> no, I hadn't heard of any swan sightings. And look around to your heart's content, weaver threadbare. And remember, if you break it, you buy it. <laughs> That's beautiful. I've never seen anything sparkle like that. Not even the long tapestry. What kind of glass is it? It was carved from a single crystal of diamond. But I thought you were glass makers. No, we are, we are. A dear boy, this is none other than the famous Chromax conundrum wrought by our distinguished founder, Lucent Bottleblow. His works once filled an entire museum, you know? And that was before the great dragon arrived in 7342. She blew through this city like a torch, melting and breaking our finest works, plundering our museums and treasuries until we had almost nothing left. It was awful, just terrible, really a miserable time. Uh, even Bottleblow's greatest masterpiece, the first scrying sphere, was lost forever. But you still have the conundrum. And a lucky thing, too. It was on loan to the Guild of Vintners at the time. It is the sole remaining example of our Founder's transcendent genius. But I'm still curious. Why is it diamond instead of glass? We've no idea. No idea at all. 
That's the conundrum, you see. Soft shard, wife of loose and bottle blow, here attain final clarity. Near this spot, loose and bottle blow, founder of the noble guild of glassmakers, attained his final clarity. Who are you, lad? And just what do you think you're doing up here? I... I'm not sure. I just rang the bell and well, I... Well, I'm sorry, but you're not supposed to be here. Step back under the lens, please. This is a restricted area. No visitors allowed. Good day, sir. I guess I'm not supposed to go up there. Stop her. Over there. I don't believe this. Looking for trouble, are you? You're certainly about to find it. He'll not be the only one in trouble if Crucible finds him up here. Not to mention what will happen if we get behind schedule. Listen here, lad. We have secret work to do and not much time to do it. Do you understand what secret means? Yes, but it's very important that I Good. get... Good! Please step over to the lens. Now, stupid brat, you said it. Hmm, those two are going to be a bit of a problem. Look here! You are not just going to waltz through here without us seeing you. Go play somewhere else. Goodbye. I may have to do something sneaky. One way to find out.
Our esteemed Bishop Mandible cuts quite a figure, doesn't he? I don't doubt the Crucible's getting tired of bowing and scraping to him. Why would the clerics want a scrying sphere anyway? I thought they didn't believe in the future. Yeah, your guess is as lucid as mine, Flute. But Crucible appears to think that they're up to no good again. Then why would he do business with them at all? Let alone so- Well, you know, Crucible, he'd sell his own mother's spectacles if he thought there was a profit in it. And the clerics are paying off in cash. Which should keep us in the clear for years to come. Still, I'm certainly pleased that Crucible's not taking any chances. This scythe might become very useful if our friend the bishop has been less than transparent with us. Ouch! Yes. Very useful indeed. That scythe is even sharper than a weaver's spindle.
He's back! <laughs> so are we. It's the dragon! Oh, he's after oh, us! Well, that worked. Funny. I don't feel very scary. Poor fella. He must have had a long night. You! Get away from here! Now I've got to go and round them all up again. And you'd better not be here when I get back. Go on now. Hello there. Who said that? I did. My name is Fleece, first chosen of the Guild of Shepherds. I wish we had time to chat a while and trade some tales, but we have got a serious problem on our hands. What sort of trouble are you having? It seems we've a dragon nearby who has an enormous appetite for fresh mutton. We breed our sheep for extra whiteness, so we cannot keep them on the meadows. She can spot them miles away. By now, the dragon has carried off so many that we may not be able to fill the cleric's order. The clerics? I just saw the bishop at the glassmakers. Bishop Mandible? He placed the order for 10,000 sheep. 10,000 sheep? That's enough to feed an army. Yes. That had occurred to us, too. You noticed our increased patrol in the forest. We'll deliver the sheep to the clerics if we can, but we won't trust them. I suppose fighting the dragon will be out of the question. Only a mage can save us. I see you've noticed my little friend. She doesn't look at all well. She is a... And my songs of healing don't seem to be bringing her much comfort. I wish I were better with him.
The flock is out to pasture. You'll find them there. Go forth, wizard, and may you return safely to our fold. Some of these graves are really old. Police was right. They really are easy to spot. Well, what have we here? Oh, that's what comes of being in such a blazing hurry, I guess. I thought you looked a bit scrawny. Oh, why, you'd hardly make a decent kindling. That's uh, quite a bit of gold you have there. That? Oh, that's nothing compared to what it used to be. Piled floor to ceiling it was. Everyone said it was the most beautiful lair anywhere, and right they were too. Then one day, last spring it was, comes along this third-rate wizard who botched up everything. He tried to get the volcano to blow, but only shook up the place in a huge earthquake instead. <laughs> Broke all my fancy glass, mind you, and made off with most of the gold too. The only thing he left me was a gorgeous glass ball. Have you no manners, lad? Stop staring at me. Oh, was I staring? <laughs> so sorry. Oh, don't mind me, love. I get rather crotchety on an empty stomach. D does that mean you're going to incinerate me, then? Incinerate you? Oh, my! Aren't you the foxy one? <laughs> I haven't created any fire since my last mating season. <laughs> and you don't want to know how many centuries ago that was. <laughs> no, 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 that's much too much heat for me these days. You mean you can't breathe fire? Can't. Let's just say I won't. Just between you and me, love, the stuff gives me the eebie-jeebies. <laughs> Put it back the way you found it, now. to sleep, chatty old fire bag. Eek! Fire! You haven't heard the last of me, you cheeky brat!
Guess I won't be going back that way. My own reflection. Bishop Mandible. What in the world is he up to? Hmm, repair costs must be spiralling.
He's fast asleep. What's that? Your music woke me up. Oh, sorry. Oh, not to worry. I'm Rusty, Rusty Nailbender. I'm Bobbin Threadbare, of the Weavers. Weavers, eh? Our folk are blacksmiths. I'm supposed to be getting firewood for the master, but this plateau is being picked cleaner than a new blade. Come over here. That's us down there, the forge. That's what we call it. I've heard you weavers don't get out much. What's your business here? I've been looking for a flock of swans. Swans? No. No swans around here. Oh, say, all this talk has made me sleepy. A real pleasure, though. Oh, let me know if you find your swans. Oh. These grave markers are forged from solid bronze. Oh, who are you? Just me, a friendly stranger. This is a private guild, my strange young friend. The gate only opens for members. Well, 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 it's a friendly stranger again. I guess I didn't make my point. This gate is closed, do you understand? Closed. Now go. This gate is closed, you understand? Closed. Now go away. This gate is closed, you understand? Closed. Now go away.
Nice trick, Weaver. Me own mum wouldn't know the difference. Soft robes, though. Just the thing for sleeping in. Do you mind, then? Oh. Hello, young nail bender. About time you were coming home. Stoke's been looking for you, and he ain't real happy. You better get in there right now. Well, it's about time, you lazy idiot. I sent you out four hours ago for firewood, and you bring me back one scrawny stick. If your father weren't a foreman, I'd toss you in the furnace. You're just like the used downstairs with the bishop right now. If that fire goes out and the cleric's swords don't get done... I'm sorry, I had a bit of trouble. Perhaps you'd like to offer your confessions to the bishop in person. I'd be happy to arrange it. Now give me that stick! I'm done dealing with the likes of you, Nailbender. I'll be back, and you'd better hope the furnace doesn't go out. That straw looks awfully comfortable, though. Oh, I must have a sleep draft woven into it. I can't do anything without my distaff. Imagine frightening a poor defenceless old thing like me, Cor. Well, I may not be much good with fire, love, but I still enjoy the taste of tender, firm young meat. One blasted stick of wood left, curse that lad! Ten thousand swords to forge, and the furnace is about as cold as my chances for promotion. I don't believe this. Real nice of that weaver kid. Just wait until his turn comes. I'll be waiting for him on the outside. Oh dear, that means trouble.
Elder Atrophos saw his star feeding, so he had something to say about it. You, you could be sure of that. Careful now, old bird. Let's not singe the feathers. No time for another nap. I've got to get out of here. stick left. Now that's more like it. The final blade is even now in the hands of our most skilled blade shaper, Your Excellency. Who share with me a historic moment, Foreman. The forging of the Ten Thousand Sword marks the end of our preparations. How's it coming there, Edgewise? I'm just putting the edge on the last sword, sir. Good to hear it! No slacking off now! Let's get it finished! How much longer must I wait? The steel will ring out its final defeat, sir. Not much longer now. Very good, then. Carry on! What? What evil is this? A witch's curse has twisted the final blade. A curse, Edgewise? I think not. It would take more than a mere witch's curse to ruin my plans. You there! Could it be that this little prank is of your doing? Yes? Well then, I would be honored to have you as my guest at the cathedral. I know some other curses that may amuse you. I'm getting really tired of this. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Bishop Mandible, trans-ultimate apostle of the anti-secular conclave of clerics. I know. Am I expected to kneel? Silence, you impudent punk! This is my assistant. Cobb. Charmed, I'm sure. And you require no introduction. Your cloak and staff betray your origins. But I must say I'm surprised to find you here. It's been quite a long time since any weaver bothered to leave that dreary little rock you call home. <laughs> Loom. <laughs> so provincial. I can't help but wonder what impelled you to leave it now. His Excellency asked you a question. I know. I'm ignoring it. Ah, recalcitrance. I see. Shall I fetch the uh, instruments of persuasion, Master? Please forgive my assistant his eagerness. I fear Cobb is not very worldly. He does not understand the dangerous power of a weaver. Dangerous? Your reverence. Him? Quite dangerous indeed, my dear Cobb. In fact, he could burst this flimsy iron cage open with hardly a second thought. That's impossible, most exalted one. I inspect the locks personally every fortnight. Observe and learn then, for even now your prisoner plans his escape. You 
Seacob. An elusive breed, these weavers. Fortunately, however, they're quite helpless without their weaving sticks. That distaff will never work for you. Oh, no, my young friend, you're quite wrong about that. Come, let me show you why. Consider the common graveyard. There, the boundary between the living and the dead is indistinct. Every graveyard like that, so... Now, imagine what might happen if this delicate boundary were to be somehow breached. Torn open, so to speak. It's not that simple. You can't just rip the pattern apart like an old rag. But it is that simple, my boy, and I can. to lift this rod, and the legions of the dead will stream forth onto the plain of the living. A vast army of the dead, nourished by the shepherd's flocks, armed by the artisanship of the blacksmiths, guided by the glassmaker's sphere. All under the spiritual leadership of one supreme commander, me! The final hour is now at hand. The age of the clerics is upon us. I have preparations to attend to, Cobb. Don't let this boy out of your sight. <laughs> Perfectly, Your Excellence. He is to touch nothing. Do you understand me? Lord Mandible, ruler of the universe. Mm, I do like the sound of it. I'll have to change my station. You're not so dangerous now, then, are you? Keep away from that! His Eminence said not to touch anything! I wasn't gonna touch it. Just looking, Cobb, that's all. Just looking, eh? Well then! Perhaps we can do a bit of a trade. How about I let you look in the sphere if... If... what? Well, the legends say that to gaze upon an uncloaked weaver brings death. Naturally, we clerics aren't given to such silly superstitions. But I'm curious. Let's answer this one once and for all, shall we? No! Well, he can't say he wasn't warned. She looks hungry. I think I'll stay out of her way. I 
as a cop has been lax in his duty. No matter. You're just in time to witness the dawn of a new era. You don't have the slightest idea of what you're doing. The pattern is already worn and frayed. If you rip a hole in it now, the consequences will be beyond anything you can imagine. Spare me your weaver mysticism, boy. The time has come when the dead shall no longer envy the living. You've torn the pattern completely open. And with it, the eyes of the dead. Behold! I have a very bad feeling about this. Who dares disturb the peace of those who sleep? I welcome and greet you, noble spirit. I am Bishop Mandible. Transultimate Apostle of the Anti-Secular Conclave of Clerics. And whom have I the honor of summoning? I am Chaos. You have nearly opened the door, and I have passed through it. For this, you shall be rewarded. Join me now, as my slave. It's been much too long since my last visit. I can't seem to hold on to this thing. I think I'll stay out of there. That dragon looked rather hungry. Rusty? Is that you? Y you don't look at all well. I'm not well. Actually, I'm dead. I don't... I don't know what to say. You don't have to say a thing. What do I matter? I'm just another one of the dead. Oh, Rusty. I feel terrible. And I didn't know... And that's not even the end of it. I go outside to wait for doomsday, like a good little ghost scene. But no sooner do I get settled again, but some stupid idiot shreds the universe apart and hauls us all back inside. There are a lot of very unhappy dead wandering around here. Let me tell you. I know. I was there when it happened. I might have known this was all your fault. No. No, it wasn't me. The bishop managed this one all on his own. Yeah, 
Well, there's going to be hell to pay, literally. There's talk among the dead that they're going to take over the world, starting with the forge. My home, where we used to build strong things, good things. There's nothing left but bones. You did it! You brought me back! It is what you wanted, isn't it? Believe me, being alive is a lot more fun than being dead. But how did you do it? Well, healing your body was easy. You're alive because the pattern is torn and your soul was free to return to this side. Well, I must go, Bobbin. I've got to know what happened to the rest of my guild. And I must do the same. Good luck, Rusty. And be careful. Good fortune to you too, my friend. Never even had a chance. You are too late, wizard. The dead have increased their numbers here. Those not dead are suffering, and my songs were again useless. All that's left for us is to put an end to their misery. Come, and extend your help if you can. I was just walking among legions of dead. You were saved by the mercy of yonder boy. We have not had the chance to thank you properly, wizard. But our memories are long, and we will not forget you soon. Hail and farewell. Come along now, before the dead ones return to the harvest. Master Goodmold. Ah, the Weaver Boy. At least you have escaped the terror of the Dead Ones. It appears the Crystal Guard has not been so fortunate. But I don't understand. Why did you not use the Great Scythe? We never doubted the Scythe could save us. No, never, no indeed. <laughs> Even chaos must fall under its blade. But we could not do it. To unleash such merciless evil would show us to be no better than our enemies. The entire world would have feared us when it was done. And to have become so much like our enemy was unthinkable. <laughs> Just unthinkable. And so you didn't use it? We knew the price. The best we could hope for was to defend it bravely. But we are not warriors. You mean... Chaos stole the scythe? We did what we could, but it was not enough. <laughs> Remember us, my young friend. Tell the world that we fought with courage and chose death 
with clarity. Above all else, clarity. Welcome, Bobbin. You have joined us here at last. Where am I? You are outside the pattern, the home of the dead, and of those transcended. The shore of wonder? Yes, Bobbin, the shore of wonder. And you are the first to behold it with mortal eyes. Your journey has been long, and you must have many questions. You're the swan that appeared each year on my birthday, aren't you? You saw me clearly then. I was never sure. But those visits meant so much. My only chance to watch you grow. You see, the elders forbade me to set foot on Loom Island just after you were born. I thought you came to visit me, but I never quite believed it. Call it a mother's curiosity. For indeed, Loom Child... That is who I am. My mother is a swan. Indeed. In mortal life, however, I was Lady Signa Threadbare, banished by the elders 17 long years ago for drawing an unforeseen infant out of the loom. How I've longed to know you, and you to know me, my son. Liar. That's just not true. My mother is buried in the weaver's graveyard. Oh, dear Hetchel. She and the elders put that stone there, so you wouldn't ask too many questions. Hetchel vowed to protect you forever, Bobbin. She is my dearest friend, and she loves you very much. But I fear her love has driven her to recklessness. What do you mean? Where is she? She flew off to Loom Island to confront the Dead Ones. The Dead Ones are after her? It's not Hetchel they're after, my son. They want the Loom itself. If chaos masters its secrets, the pattern will be hers to control. Hetchel plans to destroy the loom if chaos doesn't consume her first. No, I've got to go back there, now! You won't get far in that direction. The loom lies beyond the lake. No, you must try a more subtle strategy. Oh, what do you propose? The dead ones move between the holes your bishop friend rent in the past. Her eyes, they're just like mine. Get your distaff ready. You must unmake the loom now before chaos takes control. What? How? 
I don't know what draft to use. <laughs> Birds and children have no business wielding such power. Weavers are the only ones who do have the right to use this power. Destiny has blessed you, young Threadbear. For you alone will live on to pass your guilt secrets to others more worthy of them. I invite you to serve my new empire as advisor. Of course, I will expect your full cooperation in this historic exchange of goodwill. After all, anything else may bring harm to our relationship. Don't listen to her, Bobbin. Heed me now. Here are the threads that will unmake the loom. Silence. Mitchell, say something, please. I need that draft. Enough. I lose patience in the presence of inferior beings. You will now instruct me in the use of this fascinating instrument. Over my dead body. Preference, Ned. Oh, thank goodness. Now, Bobbin, quickly, the threads you need are. Ducks are meant to be eaten, not heard. Now, I believe we were discussing the secrets of the moon. your eyes now, Bobbin, but keep your ears open. Here descends the third shadow. That bird has annoyed me once too often. Bobbin, Bobbin, you did it! The loom is unmade! You ignorant fools! Do you comprehend what you have done? None of us can pass across this myth your weaver mister has so blindly created! Your pious meddling has brought the end of my dream! You will hear for all eternity the cries of those you have abandoned, Bobbin Threadbear! You will always know that you have left them under my roof. Come, Loon Child. It is time for us to begin our destinies anew. When our side of the pattern is mended, we will return and put an end to your evil.
leaving so soon, Weaver. I was looking forward to spending more time with you. You can, young threadbear, and know that we will most assuredly meet again. I am ready, mother. Let's go.